home game, senior night on your home court. Absolutely, Chris. Senior is just, like you said, everything. It is one of the things that we all just kind of excited for our last year. And for some of these girls, this might be something special this game. For one young lady, it's not the last time she'll play. That's Eloise Brandewee. She's an Ohio State commit. She's planning on going on to the next level. But tonight, in order to beat the Bishop Watterson team, she's going to need some help from her teammates. Yes, you're exactly right. The supporting cast is everything. She can only do so much, but she will bring a lot, a lot of energy and a lot of action to the game. We are just about set to go with this one between Bishop Watterson and Bishop Hartley, but first, this time out, you are watching Girls Volleyball on the Bishop Hartley Network, powered by Yamo Media. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Hey, it's Coach Howard, and I'm excited to tell you the good news about what's coming your way for this high school basketball season. Every Sunday at 6 p.m., you can catch the Coach Howard Basketball Show live on Yamo Media. We will take a close look at all the previous week's high school action, the big upcoming games, and not only that, but we'll be taking a look at the top teams and players throughout Central Ohio. I'll have special guests throughout the season, including high school coaches, players, and college coaches from all over the country. I'll also be giving out rankings of the teams and the players every two weeks. It's going to be a very in-depth show, and I can't wait to get started. Once again, you'll be able to watch the show live on the Yamo Media Columbus YouTube channel and Yamo Media's Facebook page. You'll also see clips posted throughout the week on all of the Yamo Media social platforms. You can also catch the audio podcast on Mondays wherever you find your podcast. Our first episode will air Sunday, November the 20th. I'm looking forward to this upcoming high school basketball season here in Columbus, Ohio. Hello, I am Annie J. Ross Womack, the Executive Director of the Ohio Sickle Cell and Health Association. And I'm here to talk to the parents and student athletes about a very important topic. The NCAA has instituted different standards for all divisions of student athletes. Before you can play sports in any college or university, you must present a negative trait status or hemoglobin status documentation. Your hemoglobin status is taken at birth with the newborn screening. And what they do is they run your blood for any abnormality or any birth defect. There are thousands of newborn screening birth defects in this country. For more information about sickle cell disease, sickle cell trait testing, you can call our offices at 614-228-0157. Or you can visit us via web at ohiosicklecell.org. Inside Dick Geyer Gymnasium on the campus of Bishop Hartley High School and tonight we have a good one for you between the Bishop Watterson Eagles and the Bishop Hartley Hawks and uh, Mike Robinson as we look at these two teams you look at the Hartley Hawks 
And uh, the Watterson Eagles, the only blemish the Eagles have faced all year long comes at the hand of these Hartley Hawks. I have no doubt the Eagles would love to exact revenge on senior night in this place. Absolutely, Chris. This is definitely a get back game. They're gonna try their best to play hard and not have that same thing happen again. So you've coached, uh, you, you, you run a volleyball club. When you sit down with high school players and you start talking to them about keeping your emotions in check, getting things under control as you prepare to play on senior night, what does that conversation look like? You don't want to make it too big of a deal and blow it out of proportion. You also don't want to assume it's going to be business as usual for all these kids. So how do you navigate that? It's all about energy and, it, and definitely about the calmness of the game. They do this, they practice, they come and they work hard, and now it's just time to perform. We've rehearsed, and now it's uh, show time. We are gonna step aside, we're gonna stay right here, turn up the volume, and be able to share together in the playing of our national anthem. National anthem from Dick, Ge Dick Geyer Gymnasium on the campus of Bishop Hartley High School. The introductions have been made, and now it's just about time to play a little bit of volleyball. And Mike, just as you were talking just a moment ago about the coach's role in making these guys understand the magnitude, but not too big of a magnitude of this event, you also have to have coaches on the floor and good teams find those players with natural leadership skills who can kind of bring their team into a rhythm even when the coach is sitting on the bench kind of helpless. Absolutely. The one thing about volleyball that I love, it's, it's a player sport. So once the players are on the court, the players make the decisions, and the players actually make things happen. A capacity crowd at Dick Geyer Gymnasium, and the Hartley Hawks are wearing their white home jerseys with red numbers outlined in black, and they have their insignia above the, uh, the left chest. The libero, of course, is Jocelyn Hoiser. Hoiser is a 5'7 senior. She wears the alternative jersey, a red jersey with white number, blue, uh, or should say black shoulders. And uh, she will be out there as well. Watterson wearing black shorts. They've got dark gray jerseys with gold lettering, maroon numbers outlined in gold, and some white down each sleeve. So Watterson will be moving from right to left, as you can see and Hartley moving from left to right, and we are just about set to get underway. The officials are checking lineups. Nothing better than high school sports. Purest form of entertainment, purest form of athleticism. I love to see it, I'm excited about it. What are your feelings right now? Absolutely, Chris. Especially one of the nights like tonight, senior nights. These are one of the most explosive nights. The energy is great, the energy is high. You can hear the ch crowd cheering. Everybody is involved in this game. Clara Vondren, the 5'11 senior outside hitter, steps to the serving line for Watterson first. They will send it from right to left. They're waiting on the officials. There are a couple players, a couple fans who are on the floor over there in the student section, and so the officials are waiting for those students to go away. They've done that, and here 
we go. Vondren, skip and the serve. Middle back, receive. Outside set and a big swing. Down in between the back row. And that's a point off the swing of Alex Etienne. Oh, it was a great swing, great swing, great spot. One nothing. If you're unfamiliar with high school volleyball and, and how volleyball rules in general, it's rally scoring, which means even though Hartley didn't serve, they got a point on that play. They lead one nothing. Serve to the back. Back set. Swung into the block, and that's a point for Hartley. And there she is, Eloise Brandewey, number 20, making her presence known. We knew we were going to see big things from her, and the start of it is right now. Mallory Matheny served it once, got the point, and here she is again for her second straight. She serves middle back, it's dug up. And then a little miscommunication or confusion among the Watterson players as a couple of them let the ball drop right in between them and it's three nothing, hardly on top. Matheny, a 5'10 freshman, serving well right now, quick one in the middle. Tipped and down, that's gonna be a point for Watterson and they retake the serve and when this rally scoring, having the serve makes all the difference. All the difference in the world, Chris. I can tell you one thing, ears. We gotta keep the ears down. So to the serving line is Callan Kassan. Uh, Kaysen, excuse me, she's a 5'8 senior. She's the libero for Watterson. Back set, good adjustment by Alex at the end, but here comes Watterson on the attack. Swing, cross court, dug out. Quick one at the net. Up and down, big swing by Eloise Bandui, and the crowd erupts. Here we go, Chris. She's excited. This is her senior night. This is her game. She wants this get back. 4-1, Hawks have the advantage, and to the serving line goes Caitlin O'Malley. O'Malley, a 5-4 senior. O'Malley gets the whistle, she swings. Knuckle serve, nicely done, cross court, dug out. Trying to keep it alive as Brandewee unable to do so. And that was a concerted effort by Hoiser just to get that ball up, that was well struck. Absolutely, that was a hard ball to pick up. Great effort though, great effort. Layla Hoying to serve for Watterson. She serves back row and it's way too long. About a foot and a half long and that gives another point to the Hawks. They lead it 5-2 and to the serving line goes the Ohio State commit 6-3 senior Eloise Brandewick. Brandewee with the jumper. Quick to the outside, dug out into the rafters. Trying to keep it alive, it'll be a free ball by Brandewee. She clears it. Outside set, cross court, dug out by Brandewee. Second ball over. Here comes Watterson, pushed on the second. Bump set to the outside. Adjustment by Jasmine Crockett, but she hit it into the tape, and so that's four hits for the Hartley Hawks, and it goes back over to Bishop Watterson. Great effort for Bishop. Great effort for Bishop Watterson. They are doing an amazing job. Middle back, dug up. Quick set to the outside. Crockett, send it across, but it's dug. Quick one in the middle, blocked. That was number 24 in the middle, Kate McLean, 6'2", senior middle hitter. She's the, she's the opposite number of Eloise Brandewee, and Brandewee gets a lot of press, but McLean, pretty strong in her own right. Absolutely. The supporting cast is everything and she's gonna be up there building a wall. To the back row, swung, dug up, nicely dug up that time by Kaylee Music. Here's a big swing, cross court, and that's gonna be a point. Dug nicely by Callan Kassan that time, but she hit it straight up in the air and the ceiling here is very low. And uh, if it hits the ceiling, if it hits the rafters, you have to play it on your side and that time, it hit with such force, it came straight down too fast. They have to understand, both teams, that that ceiling makes all the difference. There's an ace right there off the hand of Kaylee Music. Music, a 6'1 junior, and she played it right beautifully in front of the back row, and that causes a timeout to be called by Stephanie Greasup. So eight to three is our score. The Hawks are on top, and just first impressions here for both of these teams, it seems like uh, Hartley has come out ready to play. They wanna make sure that they don't let their senior night slip past. Absolutely, this is a big night for them. And they did not win the last game, the last time these two teams met. So this is a big, big, big night for them to bring the energy, the explosiveness, and fast attacking. Hartley's record is 17-1, 3-1 in the conference. The one loss 
is to Watterson. Watterson's record, by the way, 12 and five. They're four and zero in the conference by way of their victory over the Hawks. And so a win tonight for the Hawks would mean these two teams are both four and one at the top of the converse, uh, conversation. And so this is a very important win, not just for senior night, but for conference standings and all the other things that go along with that. Yes, it is. Out of the timeout, both teams back on the floor and we're ready to go. It's gonna be Kaylee Music to serve it once again. Music is a setter, receiving specialist, and jump server apparently, nice job. Back row swing, blocked, kept alive. Outside set, Crockett into the block, and that'll be a point as Crockett used the block to her advantage. It went right and into the stands, and now it's 9-3, Hartley. High and off the block, that is the key, because they are blocking, so you have to be smart when you're attacking that ball. Riley McGee is the 5'11 middle hitter for Bishop Watterson, who is over there on the double block. There's a reception from the back row. Outside set, it's gonna have to be pushed across, covered. Back set, Crockett. Down the back line. Here comes a quick one to the outside again. A little bit short, and that's going to be blocked in the middle. Second ball, swung hard, but it's out. Riley McGee was the swinger, but she couldn't keep it between the white lines, and so the point goes to the Hawks, and they're up with a commanding seven-point lead. Watterson has to relax at this point. Do not let this get out of hand. Music to serve once again. Back row, dug out. Back set, big swing into the block, kept alive. But that one's going to go out of bounds, and another point for the Hartley Hawks. And right now, Mike, it feels like the Hawks are maybe a little bit quicker to the ball. Watterson maybe a little bit on their heels. That is correct, and they want to keep them like that if they're going to continue to be successful. Momentum from the serving line is a big deal, and this has to be Kaylee Music's fourth or fifth straight serve. This one's outside, swung hard into the block, and uh, Kate McLean got her hands on it, but it went through and down. So a point for Watterson, and they finally break music serve. They needed that side out. This is going to be important to keep the ball, protect their serve. Riley McGee steps to the serving line. McGee swings, dug up. Back set, or bump set, I should say, and now free ball across. Going quick, outside. And they're going to call a double hit on the set. So an unforced error by Watterson puts the ball back to Hartley. And you said it earlier, mistakes can be incredibly deadly with two teams are so, so evenly matched. That's one they, they wish they had back. That can make all the difference in the world in a game. Wins and losses, errors is very important. Jasmine Crockett to serve. Serves middle back, dug out nicely on a sprawling attempt by Callan Kesson. There's a ball across court, diving for it was Jasmine Crockett, but she couldn't come up, and the ball goes back to Watterson. They trail by 7, 12-5. Another important side out that they need. Watterson does not want this to get out of hand. Mejia Eglitis, the junior setter, goes to the serving line. Eglitis serves it deep, but it's covered. Quick one at the net, into the block. And Kate McLean hit it well, but equal to the task was number 24 on the other side, Peyton Graham, the middle hitter who got the block on that one. Nice sound block. She was there, she read the defense, and she was very successful at it. 12-6, the Hawks have the lead, but Watterson has the serve. Second one, and this one hits the tape and does not go over. Don't know if we'll see it tonight, but if the ball hits the tape and does go over, it's a playable ball. It's not, it's not like a, a let in tennis. It's a let's play it. If it hits the tape and goes over, it's live. Absolutely, those are always fun to try to pick up. <laughs> Jocelyn Heuser, second time at the serving line in this first set. There's a back set, big swing, and it is out. Wanted a touch, did Maggie Johnson, but she did not get the call, and it was long, so it'll be back to Hartley, 14-6. The Hawks lead it. Hoiser once again. Back set, big swing down the line, that one's in. That's one of the most difficult shots in volleyball is when you go up high like that and you paint the line, especially when you've got a blocker at the net. Absolutely. It really doesn't give you too much options, so you really have to be on, really have to be on point by dropping that, dropping that pinky and really making it happen. Clara Vondren back at the serving line. Vondren's second attempt. There's a bump set. Free ball across. Bump set backward. Off the net. Dug out nicely. Second ball. Swung, sent across by Jade Shade. And Jada gets the point for the Hartley Hawks, 15-7.
Jada, a 5'8 junior outside hitter, and she came in and did exactly what her description is, hit from the outside on a nice set. Absolutely, that was a great, great set, great swing. Mallory Matheny with the serve outside. Dug out by Hoiser. Quick one to the outside. Big elevation. Kept alive. Back set. Randewey off the touch. Watterson being a little quicker to the ball now. That one gets over both blockers. Kept alive, though. Great job by the Hawks, especially number three, Mallory Matheny, covering on that one. But this one's off the block and down in front of Jasmine Crockett. Fifteen to eight, the Hawks have the advantage in this first set. Best of five from Dick Geyer Gymnasium at Bishop Hartley High School. Callan Kaysen serves the back row. Quick set to the middle. Randewey goes up strong, hits it, and uh, she's going to be called for in the net. Just a touch is all it takes, and Brandewey caught the net, and so that'll be a point for Watterson, 15-9. Kaysen serving again. She skips forward. Off the tape. There's one. Bump set to the outside. Bump set outside. Down the line. Dug up nicely. Second ball is a bumper to the backside. Swung hard. Nice hit by Alex at the end. You know, Chris, do not expect Hartley to back off. They're wanting to bring it, they have the lead, and they're gonna to try to protect it. Caitlin O'Malley to try to do those honors in protecting it with a couple of serves right here. Her first serve is handled in the back row. Quick one in the middle, off the touch. Sand volleyball, that's legal, but uh, good effort by Jocelyn Hoiser. Sixteen to nine is our score. Emma Cloran. A sophomore steps to the serving line for Watterson. Good dig. Bump set. Dinked across. Well covered. Really great effort by Callan Casson that time. Coming in from way deep, and she had to dig that dink that looked like it was going to fall into no man's land. Very smart play. Sometimes that's what it's about. It's not always about powering that ball in. Eloise Brandaway to the serving line. She serves it. Bumped up on the second. Hit hard. Jasmine Crockett has it deflect. Brandewey tries with the second ball, but it falls to the ground. 17-11. Watterson trails, but they still have the serve with Ava Hoying at the serving line. Hoying, a six-foot senior. She hits the tape. Kept alive nicely. Back set. Dinked forward. There's a bumper. Kept alive. Good set on the second. Pushed across with Finesse, back set, big swing. Covered by Matheny, bump set. Again, dinked across. He sets a little bit too far off the paint for anything uh, strong, and that time the serve goes, or the hit goes out of bounds. And so it's 18-11 on the miss hit by Watterson. Great swing, just a little bit too much power. Kaylee Music. Shot several, and there's an ace for music. She's had a couple of those tonight. She's been very good from the serving line, 19-11. Serving can make all the difference. These games go to 25, or these sets go to 25, I should say, and that causes Stephanie Greasup to call her second time out of the first set. They trail by eight, and time is slipping away. Best of five, losing the first set, not the end of the world, but... Every coach in the world will tell you momentum matters, and so you really want to get that first one and really kind of feel the mojo start to work. Absolutely. Hartley has came out with the energy and jumped on top really, really fast, and so right now they have that momentum. And it will take a lot for Watterson to really kind of turn this game around and really make some things happen. They will be showing some of Senior Night on YouTube a little later on, and so when that gets uploaded, you'll be able to see the uh, sights and sounds of Senior Night here at Bishop Hartley tonight. There were seven seniors playing for Hartley. Jocelyn Hoiser, Jasmine Crockett, Alex Etienne, Caitlin O'Malley, Isabella Chalfont, Eloise Brandewey, and Kate McLean, all seniors on this team, and 
in uh, a picture of serendipity. Watterson also has seven seniors. Now, we're not here for Watterson. We're here for Harley, but we'll, we'll make mention that Watterson has seven seniors as well, and they've got some pretty good players, as we know. 19-11. Music with the serve. There's an outside swing. Good effort by Jocelyn Heuser, but that ball was a howitzer off the right arm of the swinger, and that's a point for the Eagles. If they can keep that momentum, that attack, those types of swings, they could really turn this around, Chris. Riley McGee to the serving line. McGee sends it middle back, dug up, trying to navigate it. That's a tough play because you're looking up to make sure if it deflects ever so slightly off the rafters that you make an adjustment and the stands are right on the court. So it's a really tough play when that ball goes high like that. Some gyms are just like that. Back row bump set, back set. Sent across, Crockett, but it's kept alive. Dinked, bump, outside, Crockett pushes it down the line and she gets it to fall. She puts it in front of number 25, Emma Cloran. And so the Hawks have a seven point advantage leading 20 to 13. Another smart play. She was pushed too far out and she made the actual tip and it was in a great spot. Jasmine Crockett, you said it earlier, it's not always uh, about the strength on the hit sometimes it's about finesse and placement there's one that goes with great strength right through kate mclean 20 to 14 the lead for hartley is down to six and the serve goes back to watterson they're doing a great job of getting the side out they just got to continue to keep the serve and protect it major eglitis to serve eglitis comes forward Back set, big swing, and that one had some authority. Jada Shade up and down, big point for the Hawks. Chris, we talked earlier about the supporting cast, and Jade knows that. She brought the power there. 21-14, and Jocelyn Heuser back to the serving line. The third rotation now for the Hawks in this first set, and Heuser airmails that one. It's out by about four feet. 21-15, Hawks leading the Eagles with Clara Vondren to serve. Vondren serves left back. Quick back set, Brandewig out. I like that back side where you back set it and Brandewig comes from the back side and sends it down. That's a great play, but that time she's a little too long. Bondren into the uh, rafters, I should say. Brandoe just has to send it across on a free ball. Quick one in the middle, pounded, dug out. And we've got a net violation against Watterson. So Peyton Graham got tied up. Oh man, they really needed to keep that serve. Yeah, that's devastating at this point. 22-16, back to a, 16, a six point lead for Hartley and it's gonna be Mallory Matheny to serve. Bump set, back row swing. Kept alive, oh. Poyser was the closest to it, but she had just hit it, so she couldn't do it again. Goes back over to Watterson. Sometimes the fates of the, blue, of the rafters are on your side. This gymnasium has a low ceiling, as you said, Chris, and they have to understand that. Keep that ball down. 22-17, Hartley has the lead, Watterson has the serve. Kazen. Serves it, and it's dug out nicely by Etienne. Outside, pushed across. Trying to keep it alive, can't do it. A one ball across from Watterson. It looked like it may have caught Heuser by surprise, and it hit her off the hands and went immediately to the right and fell to the floor. So the lead is now just four, 22-18. And uh, the Hawks, just a little while ago, it felt like they were in control of this when all of a sudden, we've got us a match. That's how easy the tie can change. Once the momentum starts to shift, you can really take advantage of it and bring yourself back into the game. I know you're not in the huddle, but if you were in the huddle, what's, what's the conversation right now for the Hawks? Is it, uh, let's settle down and do, do things the right way? What, what, what's, the, what's the message from you're you? You're right exactly now? right. Uh, we have the lead, let's protect our lead, let's calm down. Um, we gotta push five, I mean push, uh, we gotta push four, really. Yeah, we gotta push somewhere around in there to get this, to get this win. So it's important for us to relax, and play our game. 
keep that momentum going. And if you're Watterson, you've got a little bit of momentum right now, so how do you maintain that? How do you keep that rolling? You got to just come out with that energy. Come out and attack. Act like you want it. And don't make any mistakes. Kaysen, back to the serving line. We've had a few service errors. We have a few things like that. You've got you to avoid those. Out of the timeout, Kaysen ready to serve at 22-18. Hardly has the lead, and this serve is wide. And there's a mistake. Ears is everything. And if you continue to make the mistakes, you're not going to win this game. So it's important to bring that down from serves to swings to everything. Kaylin O'Malley checks in. Alex at the end comes to the sideline, and O'Malley goes to the serving line. 23-18, just two points away from winning the all-important first set. There's a bump set, and they're free ball across. Here we go, quick one to the outside, or into the middle, I should say. Dug out nicely. Outside this time, Crockett into the block, and Riley McGee was there as one of two on the double block, and Crockett hit it into it, so the ball goes back to Watterson. The lead goes back to four, hardly with it, as Emma Cloran goes to the serving line. Warren hits it hard. Second ball set to the outside. Crockett goes high, it's touched, dug out. Outside set. Into the block, point for Hartley. And Brandewee kind of excited after putting that one down. She housed that ball. Do not forget about her. This is her night. She's ready, and she's ready to bring it. That was a big block, Chris. Eloise to the serving line now with one point needed. She serves it. Kept alive for the moment, outside. Big swing down in front of Brandewee. And so the point goes to Watterson. They get the serve as well, trailing 24-20. In case you're wondering, yes, Riley scoring is a part of this game all the way through. So if there's a service error or anything like that, that point would go to Hartley. Outside, Crockett goes high, hits it hard. Back set, pushed just inside the line. Another, Nicely placed that time. Another smart, smart play, Chris, just to get the side out and to keep things going. Sydney Spears sent it down the line just inside, 24-21. Bump set to the outside, Crockett pushes. Kept alive by Watterson, outside. Blocked at the net, that time it was Kaylee Music with the block. And it went down, and the point goes to the Hawks, and they take set number one, 25-21. We want to thank you for watching this broadcast of Bishop Hartley Volleyball on the Bishop Hartley YouTube channel. This game is powered by Yamo Media. Yamo Media is a new company that specializes in live streaming, podcast creation, distribution, 3D animation, and visualization. For more information, please visit www.yamomedia.com. That's www.yamomedia.com. So we've got a couple of minutes here before we go into set number two. Hartley got the victory. Watterson, though, after a really slow start, started to come on a little bit, and uh, we could see why. They were able to be victorious the first time these two teams played. So now it's adjustment time. Both coaches say, here's how we're going to do things just a little bit differently in set number two. Absolutely. I always say that set number one is like a taste test. You can kind of just kind of fail each other out, see who's ready to bring it, see who needs to make some adjustments. Um, I think both coaches are making those adjustments now because, again, um, you don't want to give up the lead. You want to control those mistakes, those errors, whether it be a serve, whether it be a pass or a swing. Once you get that under control, you can really, really be successful in this game. We've talked a little bit about the errors, and it feels like in that first set, the number of errors leaned Watterson's way. They made a few more mistakes than did Hartley, and that was, showed up in the scoreboard a little bit. So how do you talk to your 16, 17, 18-year-old kids and tell them to make fewer mistakes without getting them down on themselves, without starting to you know, eat away at their confidence a little bit? Absolutely. I think what happens is you have to understand as a coach and as players that mistakes will happen. The key is to not have as many. And if you're going to have them, don't have them late in the game. <laughs> you want to have them, yeah. you want to have them kind of early, and you want to be able to bring it home um, in the game. 
So Watterson trails the Hartley Hawks one set to none. This is best three of five, so we'll see at least three sets tonight. Last time these two teams played, they went all five, and Watterson uh, won the fifth set. The fifth set only goes to 15, and they won it convincingly 15 to nine, so it feels like, and I realize it's a very small sample, but it feels like you don't want to go to the fifth set with Bishop Watterson. You want to do everything you can to take care of business in the first three or four. Senior night, strong players, energy. No, they don't want to go to five. They want to get this done in three, and everybody gets to go home. So if they can do that, I'm sure they will. And plus, like I said, it will also make a statement that that first one was a fluke, and we're here to play. The two teams stay on the sides of the, of the court that they played the first set on. In college volleyball, you'll see often the teams will switch sides at each set. Here, though, the Hawks are set going from left to right. Watterson is set going from right to left. And uh, as we prepare to play the second set, a substitution immediately as Kate McLean comes off the court and going to the serving line is number one, Jocelyn Hoiser. Hoiser's done a nice job from the serving line and uh, digging those balls out of the back row. She's been great at that. Her serve is dug quickly outside. Big swing. Kept alive, quick to the outside, pushed across, nicely pushed that time by Alex at the end. Back row swing, that's covered. Great hustle, get on, she keeps it in front of the antenna, really well done. Off the touch, hustling, hustling, bump set to the back and Brando E will just send it across. Quickly to the outside, they stay alive, bump set. Nice rally to start uh, the first point here. Kept alive, crack it, hustling. Great but unable hustle. to dig it out. Great, great, great hustle. That was awesome to try to get to the ball and save it there, but it was just a little too much. Jaslyn, Jasmine went diving into her bench, came up just a little bit short from hitting her head on the bleachers in that effort. Watterson has the early advantage, one nothing, and now it'll be Callan Kaysen. Kaysen serves. Outside, down the line. Nicely contorted that time by Music. She was able to turn her body to send it down the line. And that was nicely struck by Brandewey. Big swing by the 6-3 Ohio State commit. I expect her to bring it this game. This is an important game. If they can get up 2-0, to zero, that energy, they can take the momentum out of Watterson. 1-1 one, one is our score. And to the serving line is Kaylee Music. She's been very good at the serving line tonight thus far. That one's going to rattle around the rafters. Hit into the line and out. So the block at the line and a really nice job that time on the swing by Maja Aglitis. 2-1, Watterson on top. Sydney Spears to serve. Spears, big swing. Nicely dug. Man, oh man, Jada Shade. We've called her name two or three times, and each time it's been after she has just pummeled a volleyball. She is absolutely bringing the energy. She's bringing the power. She's fast to the net. I expect to see really big things out of her this game. And Jada just 5'8", so she's not among the trees. She's just got hops and a great technique. There's one into the block and out of bounds, so that'll be a point for Watterson. And Bishop Watterson leads the Hawks in this second set, 3-2. to two. Ava Hoying to the serving line, wearing number five for the Eagles. Hoying skips forward, sends it right into the net. Serving error, 3-3 three, three the score, and it goes back to the Hawks. As I said before, Chris, them serving errors can be a little bit of everything. We hope that they keep them down and not repeat what they did last set. Eloise Brandaway to serve it. Down in front, dug out though. And that one's gonna be blocked, sent deep into the corner. Really great effort back there. And then off the touch for the score, Jasmine Crockett gets the kill, but goodness gracious, Brandaway and number seven, Caitlin O'Malley, teaming up in that back corner to make a great save. Great, great save, great effort. I think someone went down and stepped over and all that good stuff, so it was a good play. Brandewey serves middle back, hits the rafter. 
Trying to keep it alive really nicely. That's a great effort by Layla Hoying because she had to cut that hard to keep it inside the antenna, and she did. The downside is she didn't get it across the tape. 5-3, Hawks lead. Brandewey bringing it. Middle back dug out by Kaysen. Quick one. That's a powered down hit by Riley McGee. She went up and put it right inside the eight-foot line. Great one ball. She was so quick and very, very fast to it. That right there can really make a difference there. It's my favorite play is that quick hit in the middle, the, the one ball as you put it. That one's way long. They got to get their serves in. That's so important right now. So to the serving line will be Mallory Matheny. Her team leads it by two, six to four in the second set. And that one goes wide. So a serving error for Matheny and the ball goes right back to Watterson. And it'll be number 28, Maja Eglitis to serve for the Eagles. Back set, Crockett has it touched. Quick one in the middle, hit hard, but out. How much, I mean, all these players, these middle blockers are all six foot or taller tonight. We've got some really tall athletic players, but when you see arms 6'3", coming over the net, how much does that play into your head? I know it's all very, very quick, but are you thinking adjustment in the air as you're trying to swing and get around that block? Absolutely. Any good swinger attacker has to be able to make those adjustments when they got going up against very tall players. Back row bump set. Crockett hits it off the block. It wasn't hit very hard, but it went off the hands of Sidney Spears and just kind of rolled and fell to the ground. And the Hawks have the lead 8-5. to five, And a timeout is taken by the Bishop Watterson Eagles. So talk a little bit more about that. I, I, I see it more in outside hitters who have the three-step approach and all of that, but when you're in the middle and it's really quick, it may be a one ball or it may be a little bit taller than that, but the middle hitter has a less time to react in the middle blocker as well. Talk about how, you know, what, how, how quickly does the game slow down for those kids who are in the middle so that they can see the whole floor and make a quick decision. If this is what they do the game, you're exactly right. It does slow down for them, Chris. Um, I think what happens, though, is they have to see that ball, see the opening spot, um, drop your pinky, uh, drop your thumb, cut that ball as much as you possibly can because the blockers are there to block you. And you have to make the adjustment so you don't get blocked, whether it be high off the hands, off the arms, or whatever, but you have to make some adjustments as a hitter. And good swingers will use the block to their advantage, to your point. If you cut it off of a block and it goes left or right, that's as good as them not blocking it at all. Absolutely. Out of the timeout, here's Jasmine Crockett. She serves. Kaysen, that one stays close to the net. And it's going to be net interference on number 28, Maja Iglitis. She put her hand up over the net on the second ball, and that's interfering with the Hartley Hawks. 9-5. Here comes Crockett. Dug out, back row, outside set, big swing. Trying to keep it alive, they do. Back set, big swing. And that one's going to end up in the scorer's table. That was a great swing by Sidney Spears that time. The six-foot senior got a lot of it. And as we said, it was dug, but it was dug with a sharp right angle and uh, turned into a, a ball in the stance. Second ball, bump set. Cross court, too wide. Trying to find that angle was Kate McLean, but that time she didn't turn herself enough and she hit it wide. 9-7, we got a close one. The mistakes are happening. They have to bring down the mistakes. Clara Vonderen, back row. Quick one at the net, outside. Nice elevation by Etienne. Bump set to the back. Coming quick, back set. Music hits it, but it's, it's dug up. Nice placement down the right sideline and hustling for it was Jasmine Crockett. But it was kind of an off speed. I think it was mishit just a little bit, but the, the placement was perfect, and Crockett didn't quite get her hand on it. That is an example, Chris, of what we just spoke about, about the attackers being able to adjust. 
And there's an ace on the serve by Watterson as Clara Vondren painted the back line. And we are tied at nine. Vondren off the tape. Quick one in the middle. And immediately Kate McLean turns and says, sorry, she got the point, but she hit it off the top of the tape and it wasn't quite as dramatic as anyone would have hoped for. So she looked to her setter and said, hey, my bad. She's got to take what they give her. That's what's important. If it was a success, go with it. That's exactly right. I meant to do that. <laughs> Hoiser serves. Quick one to the outside, cross court. Oh my goodness. Free ball. Stays in play, nicely recovered outside. Another big swing, trying to keep it alive. And colliding were Etienne and Hoiser, and the ball went left. So it's 10-10. And the serve goes to Callan Kaysen. Kaysen, the libero for Bishop Watterson. She's got the alternative jersey on. We'll give you a little lesson in the role of the libero as we continue on here tonight. There's one into the block and down, trying to cover it was Alex at the end, unable to do so, and Watterson has their first lead of the night. This time it's 11-10. That was a big, big, big block. That won't happen often, but <laughs> when it does happen, you gotta celebrate. Kaysen back to the serving line. The 5'8 senior surveys the field and sends it across. Quick one at the net, Brandaway pounds it down and unable to dig it was Major Iglitis. Point to the Hawks and we are tied at 11. I like how they went right back to her and she came up very successful. Kaylee Music. Quick one, cross court cut nicely. Probably would have gone wide but uh, Alex at the end Tried to make a play on it, was unable to do so. 12-11, Watershed on top. Of course, the easy argument is to say, well, you gotta communicate better. But at that point, the ball's cut really hard. Everybody's coming this way and, and having to adjust field. So it's hard to communicate that it's gonna be out when everybody's moving a different direction. Absolutely. That was a great cut that she did. That serve was well deep, and so we're tied at 12. And to the serving line goes Caitlin O'Malley. The 5-4 senior. Outside set, big swing into the block. Brandewe goes up again, gets a piece of it. Bump set. Second one, bump to the outside. Crockett hits it hard, but it's handled. And that one goes off the tape. Crockett had no chance, 13-12, Watterson on top. Great effort, great effort, but good, good attacking from Watterson. We're glad you've chosen to join us for senior night from Bishop Hartley, 13-12. Watterson has the lead here in the second set. There's an attack error for the Hawks, and Watterson now leads by two, their biggest lead of the evening and that causes coach Michael Ray to call timeout. Scores 14-12 and Michael Ray deserves some props. Of course we talk a lot about the players and certainly rightly so but uh, on Saturday versus Gehenna he notched his 200th victory as the head coach of the Hartley Hawks and uh, you've done this you know how hard it is to win at any level 200 victories since 2013 pretty impressive. Very impressive. And what's even impressive is Michael Ray, he, uh, he went to college and he only took volleyball as a, in a mural. I don't know if you know that or not. And then um, after that, he just got so involved in it and started coaching. And obviously he's been a successful coach. And even right now winning his 200th win is just such a, a great pillar and milestone. He's looking for 201 tonight on senior night. And certainly that one would be maybe a little bit more special than some of the others that he's had along the way. But when you're a coach and you're a coach with a team as gifted as this one, every one of them is special yeah, because they're all building blocks to the next thing. This team was a Final Four team a year ago, and uh, they have high aspirations this year he as has, the postseason gets underway. He has done a great job with this program, and I'm really excited for him. Out of the timeout. Back row bump. Crockett 
too strong. 15-12, Watterson on top. And momentum is clearly in Watterson's corner. Ava Hoying serving again. Right past Caitlin O'Malley. She thought it might go out. It did not. 16-12. This is the time where Hartley has to relax. Get the ball back. Get a side out. Doug. Back set. Brandaway hits it into the block. It wasn't a great set by Music that time, and Brandaway had to kind of adjust in midair. She did get it across the net, but only for a moment as it came straight back and down. 17-12. Ava Hoying. Bump set to the outside. Crockett. Hit it pretty well from way back. This one's pushed across on the touch. Bump set. Crockett down the line. Out. They're asking for a touch, but the ladder official says there was no touch, and so it's a six-point lead for Watterson now. Quick one. Brandaway up and down. And well, you need a stop. You're 6'3". D1 commit is probably a good place to look. She is the go-to. She is definitely the side-out person that you need to happen to get that ball back. Now it's time to protect your serve. 18-13, the Hawks trail by five. Brandewey with the toss and the swing. Trying to keep it alive, gentle push across, bump set, backwards. Crockett down the line, out. That's an attack error, and Crockett hit it well, but just a little bit to the left of the line. Nineteen thirteen. Riley McGee to the serving line. Crockett with the reception, back set, and a big swing. That's Jada Shade once again. She uses the block, and it goes straight down. Point for the Hawks. They trail by five, but they get the serve back. She has been such an asset in this game, in this set and the last set. I really look forward to seeing more of her. Shade just a junior, so she'll be back for another run a year from now, but her season's far from over right now. Good bump to keep it alive. Free ball across. Here comes Watterson. Quick one. Back set. Hit hard and straight down off the arms of Mallory, Mallory Matheny. A great way for Watterson to take advantage of that free ball. It's really like just a gift, and it gives the other team a chance to attack. 20 to 14, Watterson on top. Major Aglitis to serve. Crockett, quick one in the middle. Kept alive on the block, on the deflection. Bump set. Going to free it across. Can Hartley respond? Pushed. Dug up nicely by Kaysen. Big swing. Unable to keep it alive. Good effort by Caitlin O'Malley to try to save that one. Couldn't do it. We're seeing a fight here. Both of these teams do not want to give up on that ball. It is so exciting. 21-14. Watterson on top. Aglitis to serve. Tight at the net. Cut nicely, but dug out well by Kaysen. Free ball across. Here come the Hawks. Quick one in the middle. Pushed by Crockett, and she finds the dead spot on the floor. Point for the Hawks. 21-15, and they get the serve back. Chris, I feel like that was a planned play. It looks like a decoy that was going up there. Here's Crockett's serve. Nothing doing. And you, you talk about it being a planned play. A lot of folks who don't have a lot of time around volleyball, they think, you know, it's just bump set spike. But there are deeks. There are, there, uh, we've, we've already seen dinks rather than big swings. We've seen uh, finesse plays. Uh, there's a lot of strategy that goes into playing volleyball at this level. Absolutely, yes. Plays are definitely involved in volleyball. Music down the line, nicely swung. Kept alive, though. Free ball across. 
Watterson, quick, down. Watterson is on the attack. They are ready. Peyton Graham with the hit. Watch it here. Sorry, that wasn't Graham. That was Sidney Spears with the hit. Back row. Back set. Down the line. Big swing by Kate McLean. One ball across. Back set. Off the touch. Sidney Spears had enough to hit it through the block and still find its way all the way back. Big swing by Spears and a timeout taken once again by Michael Ray as his team now is two points away from being tied up at one set apiece. What's the difference between set one and set two? I know momentum's part of it. Watterson started really slow in set one, kind of climbed back. They've been in it from the beginning and they've slowly worked themselves up to a lead now. What What's the difference? Chris, adjustment. I think adjustments has happened. You've seen Watterson attack more. Um, again, their ears has now came down a lot more. They, we don't see as many as we did, whether it was nerves, whether it was uh, this crowd and everybody against you when you're in somebody else's home. But we have seen them settle in and really make some positive things happen with that ball. So out of the timeout, Watterson is back on the floor partly making their way out, moving with a little slower perhaps than they did at the beginning. Maybe a little shell shocked right now. But high fives all around. Hoiser trying to get her team motivated as the ball goes back to the serving line and Clara Vondren for Watterson. Vondren serves, dug out by Crockett, trying to push it across, nothing doing. That's a mistake by Peyton Graham and the ball comes back to the Hawks. Those, uh, those tips are harder than they look. You have to time it and it's not a set to you. Back row swing and Poyser was leaning one way. The ball went to her left while she was leaning right. She got an arm on it, but nothing more. 24-17 now, a seven point lead and more importantly, set point. Callan Kaysen. Kaysen gets her instructions from the sideline and serves. Crockett comes up with a quick one in the middle. Brandewee crushes it off the block and a point for the Hawks, and they're not dead yet, 24-18. Absolutely, Chris. They have to continue to play, continue to fight. It's not over until 25 is reached. So Kaylee Music to the serving line. She's been very good from there tonight. She's good there as well. Quick one into the block. Here comes Watterson again, very tight to the net, out of bounds, not close. Kaysen tried to push it around the block and pushed it out of bounds, 24-19. Music to go again. They trail by five. Pushed, kept alive. Outside set, close to the net, off the block, and a point for the Hawks. Alex Etienne gets the point, and the timeout will be taken by Stephanie Greasup. And you might say, well, that's all off timeout, but as quickly as those points dissipate, you've gone from leading by seven to leading by four, even though you only need one. If you don't get the serve back, it's not really in your control. In this game, the tide can change so fast. So you have to continue, as I always say, protect your serve, keep your mistakes down, because it will change, and it will change against you just as fast as it got, as it, is for you. And how about Kaylee Music? We've talked about mistakes on both sides, and I think, as, as you pointed out, the mistakes that Watterson made in the first set and found their way over to this side for Hartley in the second set, but serving errors can be absolutely devastating, and Music has been lights out from the serving line tonight. It can be so devastating to a team. One, two, three, four points, so easy. So it's important to try your best to get the uncontested swings as a serve over and just let your team do the work. And so out of the timeout, Music will continue trying to get the ball over the net and give some difficulty to the Watterson Eagles. She's hit two in a row. She needs at least four more to tie this one up. 
Off the arms a little bit. That's gonna have to be free to cross. An opportunity here in the middle. Brandewey into the block. I think that hit arms and then head and went backwards. <laughs> it has so much power. It was just can do anything it wanted to do. Brandewey picks up a point and it's 24-21. All of a sudden, the Hawks down by three. Music again. Close to the net. And that's a point. Watterson has surrendered five straight points. And their lead has shrunk to two. 24-22. She just barely touches the ball on the overpass. And the first mistake of the night for Kaylee Music, as far as the serving line is concerned, ends the set as she serves it into the net, giving Watterson their 25th point. And at the end of two, it's one set apiece. Hardly got the first one. Watterson got the second one. And in just a few minutes, we'll go on to number three. If you've ever considered a career in broadcasting, but you don't know where to start, check out the Ohio Media School with a variety of programs. The Ohio Media School can teach you the fundamentals of podcasting, video production, and social media management. You can even obtain an associate's degree in as little as 18 months. For more information, visit www.beonair.com today. You and I, we probably need to go to some of these classes when we're done with this. What do you I think? Know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Set number three around the corner, but we're going to take a quick timeout. More coming up for Hartley High School after this. You are watching Girls Volleyball on the Bishop Hartley Network, powered by Yamo Media. Hey, it's Coach Howard, and I'm excited to tell you the good news about what's coming your way for this high school basketball season. Every Sunday at 6 p.m., you can catch the Coach Howard Basketball Show live on Yamo Media. We will take a close look at all the previous week's high school action, the big upcoming games, and not only that, but we'll be taking a look at the top teams and players throughout Central Ohio. I'll have special guests throughout the season, including high school coaches, players, and college coaches from all over the country. I'll also be giving out rankings of the teams and the players every two weeks. It's going to be a very in-depth show, and I can't wait to get started. Once again, you'll be able to watch the show live on the Yamo Media Columbus YouTube channel and Yamo Media's Facebook page. You'll also see clips posted throughout the week on all of the Yamo Media social platforms. You can also catch the audio podcast on Mondays wherever you find your podcasts. Our first episode will air Sunday, November the 20th. I'm looking forward to this upcoming high school basketball season here in Columbus, Ohio. Hello, I am Amy J. Ross Womack, the Executive Director of the Ohio Sickle Cell and Health Association. And I'm here to talk to the parents and student athletes about a very important topic. The NCAA has instituted different standards for all divisions of student athletes. Before you can play sports in any college or university, you must present a negative trait status or hemoglobin status documentation. Your hemoglobin status is taken at birth with the newborn screening. And what they do is they run your blood for any abnormality or any birth defect. There are thousands of newborn screening birth defects in this country. For more information about sickle cell disease, sickle cell trait testing, you can call our offices at 614-228-0157. Or you can visit us via web at ohiosicklecell.org. One set apiece here at Hartley High School at Dick Geyer Gymnasium. And we are ready for set number three between Bishop Watterson and Bishop Hartley. He's Coach Mike Robinson. I'm Chris Solwecki. Producer tonight is Adam Dell of Yamo Media Group. We're glad to have you along for senior night at Bishop Hartley. And the point goes to Watterson. On the deflection, one nothing. Watterson on top. And Watterson has got to come out bringing it again. They're going to really try to keep that momentum going on their side. Second serve, dug in the back by Crockett. Back set. Dug out nicely after a good swing by Jay, Jada Shade. That one's off the arm of Kaylee Music, and it's 2-0. 
Watterson on top. Clara Vondren, the 5'11 senior outside hitter, serves for the third time. That one's high and goes left, and hustling into the bleachers is Crockett, but she can't come up with it. And Watterson is out to a fast 3 0 start. Yes, that was a quick three. Hopefully, Harley can really try to better that ball and get this side out. Crockett digs that one. Bump set to the outside. Etienne cross court. That's out. And it's 4 0. Nothing. nothing going right for the Hawks very, very early in set number three. Vondren again. That one's long, and that may be the break the Hawks needed. A self-inflicted wound by Bishop Watterson as Jada Shade comes to the sideline, and to the serving line goes Mallory Matheny, the 5'10 freshman. 4-1, to one, Watterson leads. Matheny kept alive, but it's going to be a free ball across. Etienne, Matheny. Brandewee, and Brandewee showed great restraint that time and found a perfect spot on the floor. Smart play, smart play to keep the ball in play, get the, so keep, the keep the ball and protect their serve. Four to two, Watterson on top. Mallory Matheny to serve it again. Back bump, cross court, hammered. And Kaylee Music got her arms on it but wasn't able to dig it. Five, two, Watterson on top and they get the serve back. Callan Kaysen to the serving line for Bishop Watterson. 5'8", senior, libero. Brandewee with a good swing, but it's dug in the back. Kept alive, bump set. Etienne from back row. Flat-footed swing, quick one in the middle, blocked by Brandewee. She has really come to play today. We really are gonna see a great performance from her. McGee was the attacker. Brandewee was equal to the task, 5-3. Caitlin O'Malley to the serving line. O'Malley, the 5-4 senior. Middle back, dug up, going to be tight. Off the block. Brandewee pushes it across, comes right back. Bump set to the outside. Music into the block, kept alive, still alive. Brandewee tosses it. And out in front of, that was... May J. Glitus was in position, but she was off balance, and that was evidence that she was leaning forward and she wasn't able to get anything on that ball. Brandewee's long arms and that last little touch really made the difference there. 5-4, four, four. Watterson still has the lead, but a chance to tie it up here for the Hawks. Big swing, dug out by O'Malley. Outside, down the line, no touch as Jasmine Crockett tried to paint the line and missed. 6-4 the score, Watterson on top, and it'll be Sidney Spears to serve. I really would like to see Jasmine make some adjustments there. That's like three to four down the lines that she's kind of missed, and she has that opportunity. Spears serves, middle back, dug out by O'Malley. Brandewee, another point, and LOE is starting to heat up here in set number three. She's not afraid to put the team on her back and really make some things happen. She's at the serving line now. Her team trailing 6-5 in set number three. Each team won one of the first two. Hartley got number one. Watterson got number two. Back slide, what a block. Great, great, great block. Jasmine Crockett and Kate McLean were there. Watch this here. And then it just falls harmlessly just inside the line. Nice Tied solid six. push. Bump set, back row, hit hard, out. So Hartley started slow, giving up four points before they even got a serve, but now they have the advantage, seven to six. And Brandewee will serve for the third time in this rotation. The toss, the swing. And Watterson seems very out of sorts right now. And Coach Stephanie Grisup sees the same thing and calls a timeout. Eight to six, and it looks like just a little out of sync. And so uh, pretty smart timeout, right? 
Absolutely. When you're out of sync like that, it causes more mistakes. More mistakes, more, less points, or more points for the other team. So the key is to get the mistakes down, as we've been saying through this whole game. It's very important. So we're going to ask you to put your coach's hat on, Mike, and tell everybody, back, back in the day when you were playing volleyball in the backyard, there was nobody called a libero on the volleyball court, right? There was a setter. Everybody knew who that was sometimes. But it, everybody else just did what they did. Talk about the impact and the importance of that position on the court and, and how it's kind of risen to prominence in the last 20 years or so. Well, I think what happens is when you, when you think of a libero, you think passing. Uh, that person is a passing specialist, um, someone who can pass that ball um, just where the setter needs it to either make a great play for the attacker or to make a great play to make a great play. So that person is very, very, very important because if you can't pass, I don't think you can play the game of volleyball. And we've got two pretty good liberos here tonight in Callan Kaysen for Bishop Watterson and Jocelyn Hoiser for Bishop Hartley. Absolutely. Both are amazing passers. I've seen some really good passing from both of them. And in this game, we're going to need that. Eloise Brandewi serving still after the timeout. Back set. That one's into the block. And this time, the point goes to Watterson. The block was there, but it went left. Or what, yeah, it went left off the block. And so it's 8-7. Hartley with the advantage. Watterson with the serve. Ava Hoying to do the honors. Back set. Big swing. Kaylee Music picks up the point, and the ball comes right back to Hartley as they lead by two, 9-7. Chris, what we just seen there is a big hole in the block. She went right through her arms, and she was able to put the ball down in the court. Point. And it's pretty tricky with a double block because... You, you can, you're in control of both of your hands, but sometimes your hands and the hands of the person next to you don't always align. Uh, you got different heights, all the stuff that goes along with that. Bump set to the outside. This one into the block, and that time the block was true as Riley McGee was there, and the swing by Jada Shade was roofed, so to speak. 9-8, Hawks have the advantage. McGee to the serving line. Free ball across and out. So the second left Kate McLean without a whole lot to do with it. She tried to free it across and just didn't have the right angle. Yeah, it was hard from the first pass. They've got to settle that ball. Quick set to the middle. Music has it. Music again, back set, off the touch, and this time it's a point for the Hawks as the swing came from Kate McLean, the 6'2 senior, through the block. 10-9, Hawks have the advantage. Jasmine Crockett to the serving line. Outside, quick one, down. Point goes to the Eagles as Clara Vondren got up and sent it down. Put it in front of Etienne. Watterson does not want this to get out of hand. They are really staying neck and neck with these guys. You're seeing a lot of back and forth. I can't wait to see someone start to take it and run. 10-10 is the score. Iglitis with the serve from the to the back row. Crockett as one pushed across, kept alive. Second ball. That's going to pinball through the rafters, and that's trouble. When the ball's bouncing around the rafters like that, it's tough to adjust. And the point goes to the Hawks. 11-10, Hartley has the advantage. Hoiser goes to the serving line. Huser, excuse me. Bump set. Crockett comes up with it. Outside, big swing at the end. This one's coming across. Brandley for big strike. Big middle up front. They are loving an overpass like that. Please, please, those are just gifts. Exactly right. Brandley made that uh, overpass a very painful experience. 12-10, <laughs> there's... That was so close to an ace. Kaysen did a nice job digging it. Still a point for the Hawks, 13-10. 
The 5'7 senior, Huser. That one kept alive. They made something out of it. Second ball, cross court. Nice swing. Free ball across. Here come the Hawks. Quick one. Brandewee blocked for a moment. Big point as Peyton Graham was there, but uh, Brandewee was too much for it. Point to the Hawks, 14-10. Absolutely. You really see them protecting their serve and making some things happen. Huser. Back set. Dug out by Music. Bump set. Punched across. Double hit on the set. We may see a timeout here, Chris. We are indeed going to see a timeout as Stephanie Grishup takes her timeout here with her team trailing 15 to 10 in the second, or excuse me, in the third set. It's one set apiece, and so very much like set number one, where you want to get that momentum when you're tied at one. Set number three is the same thing. It gives you a commanding lead going into the home stretch. Absolutely, and everyone wants set number three. So it's very important to do your best to stay focused, to keep the momentum on your side, and really start making it happen. The Hawks came in with a record of 17 and one. Their only loss the first time they played the Bishop Watterson Eagles. The Eagles came in with a record of 12 and five, but they are undefeated in league play as a result of that win over the Hawks. By the way, in case you're wondering, the other games in the league, all 3-0. Hartley, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. Watterson, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. And, and uh, Watterson will play uh, Bishop Reedy coming up on Thursday, and uh, Hartley will play St. Francis de Sales coming up on Thursday. So there's, they each have one more league game. That one goes off the tape, off the tape on a four hit, and so it'll go over to Watterson. You know, Chris, if I'm a player on this floor, this is an important game. This game is almost personal to me. So I bet you every player out there is willing to give their all for it. Middle back, Crockett outside. Etienne, big swing, dug out. Pushed. Trying to keep it alive, and they do. Free one across. Here come the Eagles. Big swing. Just past the diving Jocelyn Huser, and in front of Jasmine Crockett. Point goes to Bishop Watterson, and you're exactly right. I mean, blood, sweat, and tears going into every one of these points right now. Absolutely, and they're all playing just like it. Middle back, Crockett, back set, quick one. Brandewee down the line, points for the Hawks, and Brandewee just a little impressed with herself on that one. Yes, I think she impressed the whole house. With that. <laughs> yes, sir. When you impress everybody else in the room, you can be impressed with yourself as well, and that's exactly what uh, Ms. Brandewee did that time. Goodness gracious. Back set, into the block. Brandewee roofs it. Spears was the swinger. Brandewee said, not here, not now. 17 to 12, Hawks lead. We are really seeing her put this team on her back and really try to make this happen. They really want this set. Matheny serves middle back, back set. A little bit of an adjustment. Matheny quick. Brandewee pushes it across, dug out. Outside, pushed into the block. Mallory, quick, cross court, point for the Hawks. This time, Brandewee shows finesse over power, and it's 18-12. You see it there, the little touch across for Eloise Brandewee. Good serve by Mallory Matheny. Cross court, dug out, close one, kept alive, pushed, and you're going to be out. That was a tough one because the, the pass was very close to the net. All Matheny could do was kind of one-hand it and try to keep it alive, and Brandewee sent it a little wide. She did make a great adjustment to get it out of that net there, but it's kind of hard to do anything with it once it's, once it's out in the air like that. 18-13, Hawks.
Hartley leads, Watterson has the serve. Outside, Music. That's gonna be kept alive, nice concentration. Here we go, back set, Brandwee into the block. Kept alive, outside, swing into the block. Hustling and unable to get it up in the air. 19-13, and you said it earlier, Eloise Brandewey doing it all right now offensively. Absolutely, we're seeing the best out of her right now. You can almost see a little bit of exhaustion on her face, but she's willing to bring it. She's out there smiling though. Yes. Having a good time, O'Malley with the serve. Outside, big swing. Oh, pinball wizard right there as it went off the arms of O'Malley and off the face of Holt Huser. The point goes to Watterson, 19-14. Watch it here. Got there a little late. Sydney Spears to serve. Back set. Good adjustment by Brandewey. Quick one. Brandewey pounds it down and into the stands. Goes off the hands of Spears and goes takes a hard ride into the stands and hit a fan. 20 to 14. Chris, if I can say something about her athleticism, it's so amazing. Yeah. Like that set, that first try attempt was just off, and she was still able to get the ball over to come back and then get a nice kill. That was just absolutely amazing. Yeah, she was in the air for a long time making the adjustment on that first one. Back set, and they're going to call a double on uh, Mallory Matheny. The freshman gets called for the double hit there. 20 to 15, Hawks have the advantage. Ava Hoying to serve. Crockett, middle back. Here comes Watterson, outside, off the touch. Crockett keeps it alive, second ball across. Back set, into the block, point for the Hawks. Chris, Kate. that was a big block. They really came with it, that block there. It was important to get the side out, and really come again. It was Kate McLean and Jada Shade who teamed up for that against number 34, Layla Hoying. 21-15, a six-point Hawk lead. Outside, gentle. And hit McLean's hand and just fell gently to the turf. Nobody was able to get to it on the finesse play, 21-16. Riley McGee to serve. Quick middle, just wide. Coach Michael Ray prowling the sidelines, trying to get this team focused here as they trail as they lead by four. Outside set, shade, big swing. Free ball across, here come the Hawks. Shade into the block, kept alive. Quick one, push down, point for the Hawks. Kate McLean with a quick one. Chris, smart play. That was a really awesome play, really quick, and she really made it happen with the nice placement. 22-17. Hawks have the advantage in this third set. One set apiece. Crockett. Back set. And just to the right of Crockett. 22-18. Good swing by Clara Vondren. Let's watch it again. Major Glidus. Crockett digs it. Back set. Shade into the block. And that's a point for Watterson. Couple of the Hawks. Yes, it was out. So now we've got the officials coming together for a quick confab because 
A flag flew. And there's a question as to whether it's in or out. It was a great block. They got a great push. I wonder if we could see that one more time as the officials continue to chat. See if we can catch the drop there. Here we go. You see the set. So maybe the question was, was it blocked or did it hit the tape? But they're going to call that it was blocked and went out of bounds, and so it's the Hartley point. 23-18, bump set. Cross court, kept alive, but only for a moment as Huser hit it up off the rafters and it took a sharp angle and nobody was able to recover. 23-19. This ceiling has been such a, an effect on its teams and yeah. keeping that ball under control. Overpass. Oh. And they're going to call an interference on Kaylee Music at the net. The timeout taken by the Hartley Hawks. They lead it 23 20. And so, strategy time for both of these teams in this very important set number three. So let me ask you, Mike, you look at a gym like this and it's got character, it's got a few years in it, it's got stories to tell for days. Would you prefer to play in a place like this or would you prefer to play in a place that has 30 foot high ceilings you don't have to worry about the, uh, the potential of bumps and whatnot? So Chris, it's funny you asked me that because I will tell you, I have a love-hate relationship with uh, low ceilings. I will tell you, <laughs> my, my love for them is that um, it makes the player play a quicker game. Mm. If the ball isn't going high, the ball's staying low, um, you play a quicker game. If the ball is going high, it's obviously, obviously a slower game. So I have a love-hate relationship because my team will put the balls in the Raptors as well. Uh, and, and this is Hartley's gym, and yeah. you've, seen them go, you've seen them both put them up in the Raptors there. I've been a little bit impressed, though, at how few of them have gone into the Raptors. These guys are really good at passing the ball and keeping them you know, it's almost the frog in a kettle kind of thing where they they don't jump higher than the than the lid. They don't pass higher than they're able to. So absolutely. 24-20, the point goes to the Hawks, and now it is set point for Hartley into the serving line is Mallory Matheny. As you see the outside swing by Alex at the end that was blocked. And then Matheny serves it out of bounds. So an unforced error for the Hawks, 24-21, and the serve goes back to Watterson. Callan Kaysen, the libero, 5'8", senior for Watterson. Approaches the serving line. Quick, Brandewey. What placement by Eloise Brandewey to get the 25th and final point of set number three, 25-21. This one goes to the Hawks and we go to set number four. Great, great position, great play. Just a smart player. You gotta respect that you have the power, but you don't need to use it all the time. And man, I will tell you, she's such a, a influence on this whole team. So let's talk about some of the biggest moments so far of this uh, of the first three sets i mean we've got a two to one lead we've seen some scintillating plays we've seen some seen some excitement in just a second we'll be able to look at some of these plays and uh understand just what high level volleyball we're seeing here it, it, it get started right here and you see brandewe at her finest right there and you, the angle of her wrist, just the, the ability to control the ball like that is just really impressive. Absolutely. As I spoke to you before, her athleticism is so amazing. And being able to go up, see the ball, adjust, make some things happen with a set that's not quite where she needs it to be, is just such a, a, an amazing player. So we see kids all the time, and I'm not being disrespectful at all. I'm just going to ask the question. We see kids all the time get the opportunity to play at the next level. Do you think Ohio State is excited to see – Eloise Brandewey come into their program. You know, some kids you're more excited about than others. You think they're excited to see this young lady come to be a part of their program a year from now? Oh, absolutely. 
<laughs> excitement might be the understatement yeah, right. there, you know? Um, I think that when you get players like her, I think it's just one of those things that keep that program as successful as it is. We're seeing some more plays you can watch out here right now, and here's another one right at the middle. Brandewee taken care of. Again, you've seen her just pick and choose the places that she wants to put it and really kind of tear their team apart as they're, with their defense. We know most, time, most of the time outside hitters swing and hit the ball hard. There's, there's a little less finesse from the outside, though there's some based on where the ball's set on the net and all that. In the middle, though, it feels like there's an awful lot more uh, flexibility, if you want to use that term, with regard to how you hit the ball. I mean, we've seen her wrist adjusted at all kinds of angles. We've seen little twists and turns, dinks and dunks, as well as big swings. Here's another one we're going to see here momentarily on the bump set to the outside, and Crockett goes up and hammers one down. That's, that's the outside hitter, but the middle hitter has to be a little more diverse or, or versatile. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. I, I always uh, coach my middle hitters to be fluid with the ball, to be able to do different things with the ball. You have a lot more net, as we've seen uh, Broadway make plays from a slide. She was mm -hmm. able to do a back slide, um, those different things. So she has to be, as you say, diverse um, with the ball and with her hitting styles. So we're just about set for the fourth set of this best of five matchup. 2-1 now. The Hawks have the advantage. And uh, as we mentioned, it was 15-9 and set five last time these two teams played. So I'm sure that uh, Michael Ray and the team would love nothing more in front of their home fans to just get this one over with right now in set number four. Oh, yeah, I'm sure in that huddle, it's like, hey, guys, we can finish this right now. And I'm sure they agree with him, and they want the same thing for them. But let's not take away from Watterson. They don't want to go home yet. Actually, mm -hmm. they want to take this win. Look, it's important for them to come out as well to bring it. So we'll see what happens here in this set. Jocelyn Huser to serve. And here we go with set number four. And a point for Watterson, and that serve is broken right now. I, I, people may lot, maybe make too much of this, but the team that has served first has lost all three of the first sets. So, I mean, is, is there anything to that, or is that just tonight is one of those weird nights? It is nothing to that, that <laughs> at all. It's just one of those weird nights. Yeah. It could, the, the momentum can shift either way. Callan Kaysen with the serve. Quick one in the middle. Brandewee sends it across, but it's covered. Outside. Into the block. Point for the Hawks. Brandewee was right there with Jada Shade. She is such a sound blocker. She gets a push over the net. She's so tall and has those long arms. She can put that ball straight back down. Shade comes out as Mallory Matheny goes to the serving line. We're tied at one. Matheny serves it deep. Off the rafter, they're going to free it across. Quick one. Brandewee gets blocked. Back set. Outside. Cross court. Out. And that point goes to the Hawks. They take the early lead. Matheny. Cross court. Have to dink it across. Good hustle by Etienne. Quick one. Music sends it across. And then communication failure for Watterson, and the point goes to the Hawks. Good job on keeping that ball alive and really making some things happen there and causing that communication error. So it's very important that they stay with it, protect their serves, and keep this momentum on their side. Got to give a lot of credit to Crockett for keeping that thing alive when she did. There's a serve that went off the arms of Ava Hoying, and Hoying let it go straight left and out of play. So 4-1 now, the Hawks have the lead. Ace. Let's get some more aces. We'll see really this team really take off from there. Matheny sends that one a little too strong. How great does it have to be for a kid like Mallory Matheny, who's a freshman, to be able to play with all these seniors and to be able to learn in real time? It seems like her learning might be microwaved just a little bit because of the players that are around her. Absolutely. It's got to be an awesome opportunity for her, especially playing with a future Ohio State player, right? No, no question about that. There's a receiving error by Jocelyn Huser. It goes wide to the left, and so the point goes to Watterson. They've got two in a row, and it'll be Sidney Spears serving, looking to tie it up here. 
Spears serves it deep. There's a bump by Etienne, pushed across by Music, and she uses the tape. And it dinged across and fell down. So Music and Brandewee kind of talking about communication in the front row, but Music got the point to fall that time, 5-3. Absolutely. As long as they were successful, I'm sure they were okay. Caitlin O'Malley to serve. Dug out by Kaysen, outside, off the touch. Nobody able to get to it as O'Malley and Matheny converge but can't dig it. 5-4, Hawks lead. The serve over to Watterson and Ava Hoying. Bump set. Trying to keep it alive. Quick one at the net. And they're able to push it across. Outside, Crockett goes way up. This will have to be a, uh, it's not a free ball, but it's sent back by Brandley, <laughs> who celebrates a little bit with her teammates. 6-4, the work's not over yet, but these kids are having fun. Absolutely, and that is, you play better when you're having fun, I'll tell you that. And she feels like she's in the zone with her blocks. 6-4. Brandewee to serve. Dug up, back set, into the block, and that'll fall out of bounds. So McLean got her hands on it, but it could not stay in play. The ball goes back across to Watterson. They trail the Hawks 6-5 to five in this fourth set. If the Hawks win it, it's over. They'll have won 3-1. If Watterson wins it, we go to number five. Bump set. And they're going to call a double on... Mallory Matheny, which causes her to look up and around like, what? What did I do? <laughs> it's important to definitely know, hey, you got to get those sets nice and clean. Get both hands on it. Get that ball up and out. Outside. Crockett. And that's one of those times when the outside hitter does make an adjustment, and instead of wailing, she took a little something off of it and found a soft spot in the zone. Great adjustment. She found that spot and put that ball right down in there, and nobody was home. And a toss right over in front of the defender. So 7-6. The Hawks have the lead. Music to serve. Outside. Close to the net. Kept alive. Bump set backward. Crockett well off the net. Sends it across. Watterson with a bump set. Into the block. Still kept alive. And a free ball. McLean back set to Music. Spade. Bump set. Shade. Big swing. That's also blocked. Nice little rally here. Back set. Outside. Crockett. Off the touch. Still kept alive. Free ball. Quick one. And the, the point finally falls to Watterson, but what a rally between those two teams, back and forth, some great plays made by both teams. And you see a little weary in their eyes after that long rally. That was the longest rally I've seen all night tonight. So they're both, again, ready here to fight at 7-7. It's still going. Major Iglitis outside. Yeah, that's a point. For the Hawks, they retake the lead, eight to seven. And Kaitlyn O'Malley's fired up. This is five four senior as she comes off the floor. Words of encouragement for her teammate. Crockett to the serving line. Outside, big swing into the block but on the Hawks' side of the net. So the point goes to Watterson, and we're tied at eight. Chris, she didn't get that push that I know she wanted. She was there, but it just came right down her on our, on our side over here. Vondren, ace in front of Jasmine Crockett. Crockett gets up limping. They're going to have to sub for Crockett, who comes to the sideline feeling it a little bit right now. She's replaced by number 21, Molly Hanna, the 5'7 junior outside hitter. Yeah, Crockett came down on that knee probably the wrong way. 
Hope she's doing okay. Hannah with the pass. It's an overpass. And somehow, somehow, the Hawks get it to go. Etienne with a swing and a prayer on a third ball. And it found no man's land. Point to the Hawks, and we're tied at nine. That's great. That's not giving up on the play and keeping it going. Jocelyn Huser. Outside set, into the block, and my goodness, that ball is pounded, and Shade and Brandewee were there, but the block was so firm that it went off their arms and all the way out to the back side of the court. 10-9, Watterson on top. Outside, Etienne. Alex at the end with a big swing, and we're tied at 10. That is an absolutely great play. I love how Broadway is not afraid to be the decoy, and then that gives your player the opportunity to really make a nice kill. That's such a great point. I mean, when you've got a weapon like Brandewee, you think the ball's going to go through her every time. And in this case, it wasn't her at all. It was at the end of the outside. Down the line and past Molly Hanna for the point. 11-10, Watterson on top. It's perfect placement on that play by Ava Hoying. Sydney Spears now to serve. Right at the net, outside, pushed, music gets the point. Again, everybody filtering to the middle when Brandewee's out there. This time it went outside the music. She had one-on-one -on -one and was able to dump it across. It just seems to work. It is so great. She's such an unselfish player. And to put herself out there so her teammates can really make something happen. Supporting cast. O'Malley with the serving error. Frustrated with herself. Still having fun though, she's smiling. Cutting up with the coach. That ball was a laser beam and uh, Huser tried to come up with it, couldn't do it. 13-11, Watterson on top in this fourth set. Hoying to do it again. Crockett, point for the Hawks. Off the touch, Crockett that time took a little something off of it. Wasn't trying to paint the line and got the ball in play. Great setup, great way to step out and make a really good swing on that play. So Eloise Brandewee to the serving line. 13-12, Watterson leads. Not a great pass, it's gonna be kept alive but it's gonna be free to cross, music. To the back, Music dinks it again, and this time she finds the spot right in front of Callan Kaysen. We're tied at 13. I love how the Hawks aren't afraid to actually just kind of tip it over and find a good spot. It's not all about power. Brandewee's second serve. And that's an ace right in front of Ava Hoying. Hoying is six foot and that ball came in around letters level and she tried to two-hand it instead of bump it. It was in that in-between zone and nothing doing. Not gonna work, you gotta drop those hands and make a nice pass. She's bringing that ball and it's coming with some velocity. 14-13, Hawks on top. Brandewee with her third serve of this rotation. This one's dug, quick one in the middle. Blocked, but blocked on the side of the Hawks, so off of the arms of Kate McLean and straight down. That's the second one we've seen of her doing that. Again, it's important for her to get penetration over that net, get a nice push so that ball can come down. Is that more hands, wrist, or is it more forearms? I mean, it depends on where the ball hits you. Or? It is more hands and wrists, getting them over the net, getting a nice push to get that ball straight down. 15-14, the Eagles have the advantage. Riley McGee serving. This fourth set has been back and forth and has been very, very close. Bump set for Music out to Crockett, sends it across. 
There's a bump set. It's going to be a free ball of sorts. McLean has a roll up her arms. She thought they were calling a double off of the block. They were not. They were calling it because it rolled up her arms and double hit that way. 16-14. Down the line. Well done by Crockett. Again, that, great placement. She really put that ball in the back zone, down the line. It seems like that's her spot. If she can hit it, she can continue to be successful. So Kaylee Music to the serving line. 16-15. Watershin has the lead. Music serves it short, but it's dug. Dinked across, covered. Bump set for O'Malley. Crockett down to the middle of the zone. Point for the Hawks, and we are tied at 16. And again, you talked about it earlier. Crockett maybe needed to take a little something off of it, uh, make some adjustments to her game. It seems as though she's done that. Absolutely. She's putting that ball where she wants to. And you're right. That's all it was, just some small adjustments, and she was able to make it happen. Big swing down in the back. Really well done by Clara Vondren because she had a lot of top spin on that one to make it dive just inside the strike. 17-16, Watterson over Hartley. Set number four, Hartley leads the, the, uh, the match two to one. Iglitis dug out, outside. Bump set, hit hard, dug up by Huser. Outside, that's Crockett who pushes it deep. Set to the near side, off the block. Shade was there, it hit her in the hands and went straight right, out of bounds, 18-16. It's, Watterson on top. It's so important to get around and don't face your hitter. You want to face the inside of the court. That's how you get that ball back inside instead of that ball traveling out. If you're facing your hitter, you're almost always going to have that ball go out. And a lot of times people think that has to do with just the upper body, but it really has to do with your base and where you jump from because if your hips are turned one way, your body's going to follow and there's nothing you can do about it unless you're acrobatic. Absolutely, and it's really hard, but... You know, once they learn that and perfect that, I'm sure every block will be successful for them. So let's say I've got a, a seven or eight year old kid wants to learn how to play volleyball. What's, where, where's the starting point? Is it learning how to serve? Is it learning how to receive? If, if you were to tell, you know, a, a parent who wants to help their kid grow into becoming a volleyball player, where do you begin as a young kid? As a young kid, you know, um, I've coached young kids and I've always said that um, at that age, get them to fall in love with it. Once they fall in love with it, the skills and the want and the, the learning will come. But get them to have fun and have them learn with it. Then they'll start being successful, and then they'll just start enjoying the game of volleyball. There you go. Out of the timeout, here come the Hawks. Big swing point for Holy Jada Shade from the left side. Chris, do not sleep on Jada. She is bringing it tonight. And let's not forget, she's 5'8". <laughs> she's really bringing it tonight. To the serving line, Jasmine Crockett, hardly trailing by one. Crockett with a good serve. Second ball bumped. It's going to be free to cross. Outside, big swing. Etienne into the block and out of bounds. Point hardly. We're tied at 18. Watch it here. Outside, swing into the block. And that time it looked like the hands were in decent shape, but when it spun off the net, it spun to the other side. Absolutely. Some of those things you just can't control. Just do your best to get up there and get a push. There's a touch. Back set. Shade. Point for the Hawks. Jada Shade. Jada Shade has arrived, and she is here. I am telling you. She has now caused a timeout. She is bringing the energy tonight. Big swing by Jada Shade. Watch it here on the back set. She gets great elevation. Points exactly where she wants to go. And hammers it. And Jada, again, we talked about it, 5'8". You don't have to be six foot 
to be a good volleyball player. It helps to have hops if you're not going to be six foot, but you don't have to be. There are places for you, either as a defensive specialist or as we can see from Jada, she's an outside hitter with some really nice hops. Absolutely. I tell you, it's not only the hops, but it's her explosiveness. Yes. It's her explosiveness off the ground, her swing, and all the power that she's bringing behind that. The other side, you can see this hit by Alex at the end just a moment or so ago, off the tape and out of bounds. And uh, this Hartley team, when you look at it on paper and you see outside hitters, check. Two six-foot middle blockers, check. Defensive specialists, check. It's hard to find a weakness. You may, you may find a bad day for one of these players. It's hard to find a weakness on this team. Absolutely. And they're all just hungry to play, and they enjoy the game. Out of the timeout, Crockett with the serve, and that one is going to go into the stands. A receiving error by McKenna Glenn, the sophomore defensive specialist. And the Hawks lead by two, 20 to 18, as Crockett gets set to serve it again. Chris, these next couple of serves are going to be so important. They're at 20, they need five. It is going to be important not only to get the ball in, to get the serves in, but to protect it and really make sure your mistakes are very, very minimum. Crockett, good serve. Bump set from the back row. It's going to be free to cross. Trying to cover it. Crockett does, and they're going to free it across. Here comes Watterson. Outside set. Cross court. Dug nicely. My goodness. Huser. Now close at the net. Kate, Kate McLean. Twenty-one, eighteen. A timeout taken by Watterson and McLean goes up with that right hand and powers it home to give her team a three-point advantage. Great patience by McLean. Great way to not stay out the net, and you're tall, so all you got to do is just smack that ball down, and you're good to go. Great job for the team here. Yeah, that's a little bit of an understatement, and you're tall. <laughs> If I can only have a smidgen of that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was on the road with Wichita State a few years ago with their volleyball team, and I got off the bus, and the, the doorman at Northern Iowa University, he said, how does it feel to not be the tallest person getting off the bus? And I said, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm a grown man, and I'm not as tall as the middle blocker. Absolutely. So out of the timeout, here's Jasmine Crockett. Crockett, the 5'9 senior. Her team needs four. This one received in the back. Quick one to the middle, pushed across, kept alive by Music. Bunch, bump set to the back. Etienne too strong. They're asking for a touch, nothing there, and it looked like Etienne just maybe mishit that a little bit and didn't get enough on top of it. Absolutely, those was just, you can tell it was on her fingertips. Yeah, you can hear it when it comes off the, where it's supposed to versus when you hit it a little bit soft. 21-19, Crockett with the reception. Music, quick one in the middle, McCain. McLean, excuse me. Off the touch, Crockett. Music outside, Etienne, big swing into the block. Point for the Hawks. Good job on coming right back and bringing it. That was an awesome swing. Very quick, found the place, and really made it happen. You see it here, right into the block, but as we saw happen to McLean once or twice, that one hit in their side of the net. Here's a good serve to the back side. Quick one down the line, nicely played on the swing by Eva Hoying. The serve wasn't bad, but the reception was very good. 22-20. Hardly leads, Watterson to serve. Callan Kaysen to do the honors. She serves middle back. Quick one, Brandewey dunks it. It's covered. Another quick one to Brandewey. Brandewey gets the point this time. And leaves her hand raised with a victorious smile on her face. Not quite, but 23-20, Hartley leads. This is so important that the Hawks settle in right now. This could really, really, really change so fast. So it's important that they keep their posure, finish this out, and really make it happen for them. O'Malley with the serve. Outside, dug up by Crockett. Free ball across. That was a rescue. Pushed, 
Kept alive. Into the block, Crockett. Quick one, Brandewing, point, Hawks. Really nice set by Mallory Matheny that time. Watch it here. Matheny's quick one and Brandewee. Good job of putting that ball away. She got up and she put it down. Matheny trying to win it here. Outside. Matheny keeps it alive, but not for long. It was a tough pass. Matheny couldn't do much with it and ended up putting it into the official's chair. Or ladder, I should say. 24-21. This is where all the pressure is on Watterson. No mistakes. They really have to stay with it here if they're going to be coming back. Spears. Etienne comes up with it. Quick one. Brandewee. Point. Hawks. And she puts it down. What a great finish, Chris. That is what you do. And on senior night, Eloise Brandewee and the Harley Hawks get victory over the Watterson Eagles. Celebration with the students <laughs> led to a delayed handshaking with the Watterson Eagles. Now that's happening at the net. And the victory tonight goes to Bishop Hartley, three sets to one. And here's the final point once again. Great finish. What an awesome finish for her. She, I am so happy for her to be able to put that ball down, have the last kill of a senior night. Wow, I can only imagine how she feels. So that takes us to the end of tonight, and what, a, what an incredible ball game, uh, volleyball game we've seen. Eloise Brandwain, and you don't want to just say, because you saw some great efforts by some others. I mean, we saw Jada Shade make a huge con contribution. Kaylee Music from the serving line was incredible. Etienne had some big swings. It was definitely a team effort, but there's an engine to every car, and that engine tonight was Eloise Brandewey for Hartley. Absolutely. You've seen her put this team on her back with her blocks, with her kills, and most importantly, just with her game IQ of not sometimes having to pound that ball down, but actually place it in a certain place. But the supporting cast, to have that supporting cast is everything. And I'm sure she would tell you that she couldn't do it without her team that she has tonight. I think I already know the answer to this, but I'll ask the question anyway. Of all the players that we got a chance to see tonight, if you were to choose one to be our player of the game, it would be? Randy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but don't take away from Jada Shade. Yeah. She really stepped up tonight. She really did her thing, and so I was really excited about seeing her pound that ball down and really making some things happen with it. So now as we get ready to say goodnight, uh, again, final tonight was uh, three to one that uh, the Hartley Hawks got the victory and uh, avenged the only loss they've had all season long at the hands of Bishop Watterson. Now that you've seen these two teams up close and personal, and this may not be the first time you've seen them, what is the ceiling? I mean, we're coming up to the end of the regular season. What is the ceiling for postseason potential for either or both of these teams? I think they just keep playing. I think they play at the highest of their potential, and they just go, go, go. And they may see each other again sometime down the line um, in the postseason, but right now I think they just continue to play, and they play hard and, and continue to win. Is there anything you take away from this and say, man, this team's got to work on this? You know, serving, I think, okay. sir, there was a lot of errors on serves, um, and that's very important. And you'll have that, but it's important to get back there, make a successful serve, and really not have that uncontested mistake. The Hawks are celebrating inside Dick Geyer Gymnasium tonight as they get the victory over their rivals, the Bishop Waters and Eagles, three sets to one. The final score tonight. Uh, of course, you want to stay tuned to the YouTube channel for all the upcoming events that are going to be taking place for Bishop Hartley and uh, certainly Yamo Media and all the folks do such a great job with that. Partner, it's been a blast. It's, it's, real quick, tell us about uh, tell us about your venture, what you're what you're working on right now. Absolutely, I'm on a uh, volleyball club. It's an inner city focused volleyball club where we help uh, young ladies in the inner city um, learn more about volleyball. Who has a very um, passionate and very um, strong interest in the game. 
And so what I'm doing is uh, helping them. We started a nonprofit called City Heights Volleyball Club. And uh, what has been happening is we've been getting a lot of players coming out, and we have our tryouts coming up in November. And it's going to be exciting for us to uh, have girls. Uh, our, this is our second season. Our first season we had over 100 girls come out. So it's really been a successful, uh, a successful program. Cityheights.club is the website. You can also find this on social media, on Facebook, and other, elsewhere, right? Absolutely. You sure can. And we're, uh, you can like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There you go. He's Mike Robinson. He is the coach. He is also the director of City Heights Volleyball Club. Great to have him along tonight. And our producer, Adam Dell of Yamo Media Group, very grateful to him as well. Tonight, you have been watching Girls Volleyball on the Bishop Hartley Network, powered by Yamo Media. And tonight's game is sponsored by Yamo Media and the Ohio Media School. And now for Mike Robinson, for Adam Dell, for all of us who are part of Yamo Media Group, my name is Chris Salwecki. Final score tonight, Bishop Hartley 3. Bishop Watterson won. They avenged their only loss of the season here on senior night. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and have a great night, everybody.